So when I have a title that says the distillation process, we might be thinking of distillation such as an alcohol here with like a moonshine copper still, or the distillation process here where we're taking heated crude oil and producing gasoline or diesel oil or fuel oil. And while these two steps are part of the distillation process, and it's basically separating substances out based on different boiling points, we're going to relate this to distilling or purifying water. So the distillation of water results from boiling water into vapor and condensing it back into a liquid. However, this boiling doesn't necessarily need to always occur. We can simply evaporate water and condense it into clouds and then have it rain, and then it gets into our rivers and streams and lakes and then gets evaporated again. This is a natural process of the water cycle. So the distillation process, while we can kind of speed it along with boiling of water and turn it into vapor, this is a natural occurrence uh, that occurs as part of the water cycle. Now, typically, when we're looking at the apparatus required to form distilled water, it typically takes a high energy input. Typically, there's a lot of heat involved. You can see with the copper stills, a lot of temperature monitoring. Even here in a lab, a lot of uh, energy required to heat that water to boil in. As a result, now, it doesn't take a lot of energy. It's not a very fast process. But the advantage is it does produce as close to pure water as just about any system out there. Uh, so this is important to keep in mind if you're really trying to get that pure um, H2O. Uh, this distillation process would be one worth uh, considering to try to get that close to pure water as possible and removing any potential contaminants and impurities.